this is vlog part two, vlog number two. How do you numerate a vlog? Hi team, it's Wednesday night, the 21st of April, 2021. This is the second time you're seeing me, hopefully. And I've got about 30, 40 minutes or so before Dungeons and Dragons. So I have the camcorder set up. We're going to be recording the rouleau unpinning and then sewing. I think I've got enough time to get that done. Let's see. I've decided to take a second marker for the trim and just put numbers on the pieces and hopefully that will make it slightly easier <laughs> to see what I'm doing. I also wanted to trace over what I have here, just tracing around the design so that when I go to mark it on the fabric, I have a better idea of what I'm doing. This is not I did not think this part through at all. There are probably quicker, easier, more efficient ways of doing it, but this is going to be mine for the night. This is how we learn, right? We try new things, even if they only make sense to us, because otherwise it's going to take me forever to research the best way to do it. I get I get lost when I'm doing research. So sometimes just sitting down and trying to figure out the problem for myself, it really does work. Otherwise I'm going to end up on multiple websites, looking for multiple books, deciding that I need multiple books, ordering multiple books and not getting anything done for, you know, a week or two waiting for those books to arrive. So I'm just going in between each of these little petals or shapes here that I've got and not really coloring them in, just kind of making a rough sketch on the inside so that I can see what I did later. And I did take pictures of this, so hopefully those will help. There we go. I think that's as good as it's going to get. And now the part that I personally have been waiting for, pulling all of the pins out. Now the smart way to do this is to just pull them out and stick them in something. So hold please. I have not seen this pin case in a million years. This is what they originally came in. And now that is to whence they shall return because pulling all of these things out and potentially pinning my arm again, not really down, just not. So there we go, it is released. And that is our piece three. I just posted last week's, or last weekend's vlog this afternoon. Thank you to anyone who happened to be watching. Bye. Okay. And that is my call to go kiss my children goodnight. Husband reads them a story while I'm off doing dishes or reading or doing language lessons or whatever it is that I do in the evenings. And after the story time is done, I come downstairs or upstairs, wherever I happen to be, and I give them kisses and cuddles. And then I can get to the fun part, which is usually coming up here to sew. Sometimes, like tonight, it'll be going down to the desktop to do some slaying of dragons. Actually, I don't think we're slaying dragons this week. I can't remember what we're slaying. Anyway, we are going through shrines, I think. So that's exciting. All right, so we have our markings on the cord. And we're going to need to cut a similar cord length and mark it. And then we're going to cover it in the red dupioni. Hi team. 
It is Thursday, April 22nd. We are going to turn on the heater. It was cold today, which I wasn't expecting because it was like 70 last week. Rude, right? So I've got my fireside cocoa from Tea and Absinthe. Very exciting. I have my hoodie on and I've got some fuzzy slippers, which I'm not going to show you because that's, that's, they're not fun slippers. They're business slippers. I have the channel video intro, the ones that you put at the beginning of every video. I have to kind of put that together so I have one file that I can just tack on to all these videos I swear I'm going to be uploading. I need to update the whiteboard, very important. I like having the big projects, just the projects by name on the whiteboard, and then the individual pieces I have in a spreadsheet in my Google Docs so that I can just go through and check things off. I love checking things off and I love spreadsheets. So we'll be doing that tonight. I also need to set, I need to reset, <laughs> make some adjustments to the Regency Mercury spreadsheet because that has now grown slightly larger than I was expecting, mostly because of the Hamilton Spencer. And I need to update the budgeting for everything on there because I ended up spending more. Now that I've tacked on the Spencer to that project, I need to update the price list that I didn't have before. I need to also update the blog, which includes a blog post for April. I try to do those monthly, although I slacked off last year. And I need to update the Tudor Star Wars blog post that I still haven't done, but we're pieces at a time, right? And then I need to open a new spreadsheet for a project that I wasn't going to do. You'll hopefully see that new project in next week's video. I like to pretend that I'll be doing projects in whatever order they're written. Here, I've removed Tempest Cleric, which is a D&D character bestowed upon me by my kind and benevolent DM. I've already started collecting pieces for that project, but it involves repurposing some old armor, which I won't be able to get to until the weather is a little more consistent. I've put 1590's Hawk Girl back on the list. I need to rethink some design choices, but I'm just about ready to get back to the petticoat. Now we make some red rouleau. I trim the seam allowance, turn the fabric, wax the end of the cord, pull linen thread through the cord and the eye of the bodkin, Then pull the cording through. Oh wait, no I don't. I get stuck on the bias tape seam and have to pull the whole thing out and go at it from the other end. Of course. probably going to have to revisit the double piping that I had done first. I figured since I had the gray, it would be easiest to do that color. I had the most of the gray fabric, so it would be easiest to do that color, the double piping. And I don't believe I have given you a close up of that train wreck. So it looks fine here. But if I flip it around, the edges, the seam allowance is not consistent and it's not going to be enough, especially like right here where the, it just shifted. The fabric just shifted a bit and I did not make up for it. So I realized the other day that the blue and white piping should not be along the belt because why would it be? This I am going to need more of. That is the whole point here. I need to make more double piping in gray and I have a nice big length of that. It's not cut in a way that's going to al allow me to have, I'm not making more bias tape. 
I'll just put it that way. I'm not making more bias tape. I'm not. I have so much bias tape now and I'll be able to use it for years and years and years and that's really great. But I'm going to try to salvage this, I think, at least for the sleeves, which is what I originally cut this for. I only cut the gray for the sleeves. So I'm going to stick to that plan, but I'm going to go back and make more bias tape from the gray. I have some black craft cord here. So that will be, I think, a tomorrow situation. It's getting pretty late here. I think we're in the 1130, almost midnight range, and I would like to be fresh for a Friday so that I can stay up all night regaling you with tales of friggin' double piping for the rest of my life. The other part that this is going to be, I'm fairly certain this comes up next in the Spencer directions. I'll double check that again tomorrow. I'll get everything kind of mapped out and we'll have the PDF open. I rambled on about this last week. It was the not Christmas tree sleeve decoration. This is going to be my sleeve and it kind of reminds me of like a person with poofy pants and little shoes. But of course I'm looking at it now and realizing, oh my goodness, what have I done? This is closer to the mercury symbol. Again, stylized mercury symbol that I was going for. So I'm going to put little stuffed ovals down here so that I'm still doing all of the techniques in the original pattern, just in different places and with a different theme. But this is all going to be done in the gray so that I still have, if I look at it from the side when this whole situation is finally completed, I feel like it's going to be tone on tone from the side and then you get a surprise in the front. So that's pretty cool. That is what I'm going with as of tonight. I'm going to write on that down, get to bed, and we will pick up this fun and entertaining adventure tomorrow. Hi team. Today is Friday, April 23rd. Happy birthday, Shakespeare. Look, look, I got my Shakespeare earrings in and I have Elizabeth on the other side. Yeah, they're super fun. I made them ages ago and never really finished them, so I like to pull them out every once in a while for funsies, wear them with my Shakespeare shirt. I have blog stuff to do tonight. Very exciting. So there will not be <laughs> much recording going on. I am probably also going to binge music. We might try some music tonight to keep me focused on what I'm doing because I need to get two blog posts out. Two. I need to do the monthly post, which I mentioned last week, and I need to do the Tudor Star Wars wrap up, which really just needs pictures because I wrote the document a couple of weeks ago, like right after I finished the project, even right before I finished the project. I think I was still hand sewing uh, hooks and eyes on maybe. So, uh, just working on the computer and I'm going to open the Hamilton Spencer document, which I haven't done in a week because I was too focused on doing other things like talking to you and working through miles and yards of bias tape. Super fun. This is how fun that was. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight we're just going to do some computer stuff. That is apple juice with a little frozen fruit. So what else do we have? We have tomorrow more Regency, super exciting with the Costume Skills Institute. And yeah, I'm gonna try to get as much of the Hamilton Spencer done this weekend as possible. We'll see how it actually goes. I think that's all I have, so. Let's do it. Time to flatline. As a refresher from last week, this is the gray dupioni and some thin cotton from my stash. I'm using some crappy sewing kit thread to base the layers together. Wax on the end helps to get the super fuzzy thread into the sewing needle, and it also keeps the end of the thread in place while I'm doing running stitches inside of the seam allowance. Now, at this point, I don't realize that I should deviate from the pattern and add the hair canvas interfacing as well, but I'm sure it'll all work out. I also make the choice not to base down the center of the pattern pieces. This is my project, and I'll skip what I want to. 
here, I'm thread marking the roll line in a bright colored thread from the same old sewing kit. That'll make it easier to find and remove later. Again, these are just some loose running stitches for placement. I'm checking the roll line against the design template to ensure that I have proper spacing. Then I get the idea to make a template so that I can trace the outer edge of the motifs rather than trying to mark them with the carbon paper that keeps hiding from me at the studio. I trace the outside of the shapes with a marker, then use my light board to trace them onto the poster board. Pattern says to thread mark this section on the fabric, but that won't make me happy, and this is much faster. Team. Today is not Saturday, April 24th. Today is Sunday, April 25th. It is 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's the kind of day that I've had. I had to give up studio time for uh, kiddo number one to have a STEM workshop, which, you know, it went well. They are very happy. I then had lunch duties of course and the Regency Stylings workshop part two which was amazing and fantastic and inspiring for this Mercury project. I, had, I have some things to think about. Many things to think about. Flatlining is done for the front if I'm not in the mood to do the rouleau tomorrow, I might just flatline the back and move on with my life. We'll see. Flatlining at least is just straight lines. <laughs> it makes me slightly less sad. Trim makes me not so happy because I don't devote enough time to it traditionally because I'm always in con crunch mode and that's why projects like this are important. Following directions, or at least looking to see how other people have moved through the project. It's tough. It's tough being the wrong kind of creative for details. My details tend to be oriented toward what is the iconography that matches a character. For example, when I did Princess Allura, I used Juniberry flowers. I designed them myself, put, uh, had the fabric printed with the Juniberry flowers. I made her brooch with the head of Voltron in it, which was super fun and just a tiny detail that the character would wear. In a project like this, I have to insert the details. The rest of the Mercury project has details all over the place, but for some reason getting this do peony sweatshirt to do what I need it to do and to feel relevant to the character using someone else's pattern is difficult. 
the techniques are fine, but making my ideas fit those techniques has been challenging. Also, again, I am not the kind of person who does trim. If I have something to look at, then I'll say, okay, I don't like this. I'm not going to bother. Or the event is tomorrow. I'm not going to bother. Regardless, we are done for the night. I've got enough done to feel accomplished and we'll start again in the morning. Hi team. It is officially Sunday, April 25th, uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning. I've had my breakfast. I've got my coffee here and we're going to suss out some issues with the trim that I may have whined about very early or late yesterday. I need to make up some rouleau in the gray du peony so that I can potentially use the tone on tone in the lower two parts of the bow and I want to decide if I'm going to use the corded rouleau or just the fabric rouleau on the top bows. And I need to make more double piping to go around the belt. So I think we're just going to focus on the piping and the rouleau and then we'll see what's next. Okay, here is a visual on the bit that I was so poorly explaining. Rather than making three red rouleau bows on each side, I've decided on the top bow in red and the other two in gray, which I feel fits both of the original designs better. I also decided that the gray rouleau should not be corded. I didn't enjoy putting the red together at all, so for these pieces I'm just stitching and turning the bias tape into a tube, pressing the tube with the seam in the center, then folding it in half and whip stitching the edges together. This rouleau is much easier for me to work with and should give a little more maneuverability when I'm ready to add the design to the front jacket pieces. I did all of the hand stitching during the Certain Sundries Hamilton Spencer Sew Along Zoom call. We caught up on project progress and techniques that people were using to get through the jacket. All of the helpful links, call recordings, and blog posts from Certain Sundries are available at the link in this video description. After flatlining the rest of the jacket pieces, still without the hair canvas, I ended the sewing day working on the sleeve trim. I made little ball buttons just from the dupioni, no wadding needed. They'll be on the hem of the sleeve, so I didn't want to have huge pieces getting caught on everything. Here, I've stitched another bias tape tube, and I'm cutting the seam allowance down to the prescribed 1 8 of an inch. That is then turned and pressed so that the ribbon-like trim can be stitched down into a mercury symbol. These two pieces of the jacket were both the easiest for me so far. And that is the end of the week's sewing progress. Next week, we're going to detour to the fairy realm and try to add some glittery magic to our lives. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, team. By request, you get a little fish can today. Uh, let's see. We have fish. I don't know. We started with, I want to say, five guppies, five neons or so. However many neons are in the tank are the number that we started with. But the guppies, we only had a couple, and they were all supposed to be female, I think. But that was a lie, 
and we woke up one morning and there were teeny tiny baby fish everywhere, everywhere. This isn't all of them, you know, fish occasionally just kind of float. And uh, so we have slightly fewer than the last baby explosion. But yeah, these are our, our babies. And then we have two, I think they're called bottom feeders. I don't know. They're the little cute fish. Let me see if I can get one in here. For, oh, there's one. There's one right there. Um, they are, oh, there's one in the reflection right there. They're my favorite. They used to have names. I don't remember what those names are, but the kids named them. My husband also picked up some snails. Now, originally, <laughs> it's daytime, so the snails are burrowing somewhere safe. But we had originally, I want to say maybe two or three snails. The snails have been fine, but we had a baby snail problem. And we think that they just, we think that they had some kind of spawn point. So they were just coming out of some random area and there were baby snails everywhere. Like the tank was completely covered in baby snails and we had to do something about it. So my husband picked up some assassin snails and that's what they're called. And I was horrified and shocked, but then fascinated. The assassin snails, and we may or may not have three that come out every honestly, every couple of months, maybe just to check the tank, but they're here somewhere. Uh, but we got three assassin snails and they would come out and take care of the tiny, teeny, tiny baby snail problem. I think that's, it's been a while. We, we, that problem is no longer <laughs> a thing in our home. So yeah, but I hope you have enjoyed this very, <laughs> Exciting? It's not even exciting. I think there's something up with this fish right here. Those the discolorations, like, I don't think that's how the rest of the fish really are. I don't pay enough attention to the fish, honestly. I make sure that they get fed every day. If the kids haven't done it, I'll handle it. But for the most part, they're, they're so boring. But they're also very peaceful. This is in our reading nook and just being next to the fish and having that trickling water sound it's very soothing and the kids are down here all the time kind of fighting for couch space so anyway that is your fish cam break